These are the moments after a mistrial was announced in the Freddie Gray case. Here's the latest now. Authorities confirm two suicide attacks and one bombing. One of the men they say passed through Greece before detonating a suicide vest outside of this stadium. Active shooter situation, multiple shooters, multiple unfortunately fatalities. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. My son is an American. My daughter is an American. My wife is an American. Why should be we treated differently? All the peoples of the world will have to discover a way to live together in peace. If this is to be achieved, man must evolve for all human conflict a method which rejects revenge, aggression, and retaliation. Daddy said it best, he said, peace is not merely the absence of tension, but it is the presence of justice. One of the things we're doing at the King Center in, in the next two years is a global summit. And what that global summit will do is bring people who are invested in nonviolence together from around the world. Violence comes out of something. We've already started to meet with consulates from different nations to have conversations around how can we get our governments engaged in Dr. King's philosophy. Argentina has always had a foreign policy that's called a third way, because we've always thought, well, exactly what Reverend King was pointing out, that you have to look at a problem from a different perspective and sometimes offer some unorthodox solutions. I think of the march which Martin Luther King led from Selma to Montgomery 50 years ago. That dream continues to inspire us all. I have seen Dr. King's principles impact even the places that most people would never expect, which are the halls of a church. A lot of denominations kind of try to split hairs, and they're not that ecumenical. And that's really where the problem begins. I think it's just important that people understand the value and the importance of Dr. King's uh, philosophy and methodology. And, you know, he is one of those individuals that we will be learning from for quite some time. We've, we've suffered too much. And I think the greatest thing that a person can have is integrity. What we're doing now is kind of reintroducing reducing what her initial vision was, training for law enforcement. So that started with an initial meeting, and now we're looking at how to provide training for Metro Atlanta law enforcement agencies at, to move forward, to say, you know what, there's a disconnect a lot of times, and how do we build beloved communities uh, with law enforcement and with the communities that they serve, that they actually are a part of. When we think about nonviolence, we think about how do we create a more just, humane, and peaceful world society. And that goes beyond whether or not I physically do something to you, uh, hurt you. It goes with the way in which I think, um, the way in which I feel, the way in which I speak, and then the way in which I act. A lot of information, good information, it's another tool in the toolbox that I intend to use both professionally and personally. Nonviolence 365 helps to not resolve conflict, but reconcile so that we have a point of reconciliation and we can say we didn't just resolve that issue, but moving forward, we have a new way of communicating with each other. To the naked eye right now, everything seems normal and calm, but this was pure chaos. Shortly after the Mike Brown incident, uh, I heard about the uh, 365 nonviolence training. Right here is where Mike Brown was murdered. Coming from a background where, you know, uh, fighting and being combative is a part of life, um, it's a condition. So it, after taking the course, it made me understand we have to go out and recondition young men and women as well as it helped me recondition myself about violence and nonviolence. I, I, I have a, a new mindset about it. Camp Now is in his fifth year. 
And the purpose of that camp is to introduce teenagers aged 13 to 18 to Dr. King's nonviolent philosophy and methodology. It was a lot of things that I learned how to, you know, engage yourself in certain predicaments and then how to take yourself out of certain situations too by using the steps. They, they helped me to mature, this whole camp, they helped me to mature a lot. I found, you know, a different part of me. I didn't even know, you know, it was there. We even went to the bridge and marched on the bridge in Selma. He stopped traffic. They stopped traffic. So we can really get the movement Fired up. during the walk. Hold on, wait. That's a group. It was amazing. There's no other feeling like that. When we visited the King Center, we were really just blown away with what they were doing in the Atlanta community. And we really liked how we knew exactly what our donations would be going to, which would be the Camp Now program, which focuses on teaching students how to um, make a difference um, non-violently. Just having kids learn that there's so many ways to give back. Obviously, not everyone's going to be able to have like a $2,000 grant like we did, but being able to figure out all the different ways that you can start as you're young. If we want to change anything in our society, beginning with our thought processes and our thinking, it's going to start with our young people. You know, when the young people were talking about what it was like being in that 365 program, I thought it gives them a home where it's OK not to hate, where it's OK not to lash back. I said, wow, what would it be like if the King Center really created like an incubator where young people could come and create nonviolent games? I mean, it was just a thought that came to me because I said, we've got to do something. And I happened to run into a young lady um, and, and who works for Microsoft. And she's an architect there. And she said, we need to get together and it was like, just like the destiny. In order to answer the question, where do we go from here? We must first honestly recognize where we are now. This is a time for action. What is needed is a strategy for change. We will create an environment that enables our youth to dream innovate and build innovative solutions for social change within our community. There are four phases of the Nonviolence 365 Dream Builders Innovation and Entrepreneurship Incubator. Educate our future generation of youth on Dr. King's nonviolence philosophy through interactive videos, games, music, and virtual workshops. Ideate. As the students are educated on Dr. King's nonviolence philosophy, they will participate in ideation labs to design game concepts, mobile applications, and new business ideas aimed at social change innovations. Build. Students build their own inventions within virtual simulated labs that design nonviolent digital media content. Incubate virtual apprenticeship for the youth to turn their innovations into viable commercial products and services by developing their business plans, company structure, patents, funding, branding, trademarks, and go-to-market strategy. The Nonviolence 365 Dream Builders Innovation and Entrepreneurship Incubator. More of a force for nonviolent social change and to serve as a nexus for knitting together global movements to resist injustice, advance human liberation, and build the beloved community.